Today we are going to ask you five questions to help you decide if half a day is enough to explore the archaeological site of Pompeii. We'll also include some time-saving tips at the end to help you get the most out of your Pompeii visit if you are on limited time. The first question is whether you plan on taking a guided tour or exploring the site on your own. Most group tours will run for about two to two and a half hours and they're a great way to learn more about the history and culture of Pompeii. And with two hours committed, you'll still have some time to explore on your own if you've only got half a day. However, group tours can be painfully slow. The more people you have in your group, the slower it is to get everyone moving. It can be a frustratingly slow way to see the site, but the knowledge you'll get from your tour guide about all of the sites that you'll see can make it worthwhile. The second question to ask yourself is what sites do you really want to see? There are so many great things to discover in the city and there is a lot of ground to cover. So if you're short on time, it would be worthwhile doing some preparation and listing out the sites that you want to see first. Popular sites such as the Forum, the Amphitheatre, the House of Veti and the Baths are all manageable to see in half a day. You might even have time to see the Street of the Tombs if you move fast enough. If you have no idea what you want to see, go back to point one, book yourself a guided tour and see where the day takes you. The third question is how much can you realistically walk in a single day? And how fast can you go? Pompeii is a large site. It covers over 170 acres. Now, if you find it hard to imagine how big an acre is, then just know that over 11,000 people used to live in this city. So seeing all of it is a hell of a lot of walking. Now for a point of reference, the average office worker walks three to 4,000 steps per day. On our half day visit, I walked 17,000 steps. When you also factor in the brutal heat that you'll experience in summertime, perhaps a half day trip is more in your sweet spot. But if you are physically capable, then a half day might be frustratingly short because no matter how fast you go, there's always going to be more to see. The fourth question to consider is where you are traveling from. Most people visit Pompeii as a day trip, but if you are traveling from Rome, then it's two to two and a half hours each way. So it's very difficult to do a half day trip when you've got five hours travel built into your itinerary. But if you are traveling from Naples or Sorrento, it's only 30 to 40 minutes on the train. It can even be a spontaneous trip when you have half a day to spare. Question five is how much time do you actually have? Ideally, you would always put a full day towards visiting Pompeii, but not everyone has a full day. And if I had the choice to spend half a day at Pompeii as opposed to not going at all, I would absolutely go for the half day. The inescapable reality of traveling is the opportunity cost of allocating your time to one destination. It always means you don't have that time to go somewhere else. So a half day is better than nothing, a full day if you're a real history buff and you're not in a hurry. Next, we're gonna get into some time-saving tips so that if you are short on time, you'll be able to cram in as much as you can into the time you have. First of all, buy your tickets online and in advance to avoid the long queues at the entrance. Or, if you can't do this, there tends to be no line at all in the afternoon. We entered the site at 2 p.m. and walked straight in with no lines at all. Our second time-saving tip is to hire a private guide if you can afford to do so. It'll be roughly double the cost of jumping on a group tour, but you will move at a much faster pace and you will get much more direct interaction with your tour guide. But it can get expensive. A group tour will cost you roughly 60 US dollars, whereas a private tour would be at least double that per person and there might be a minimum number of people required for the private tour. We've included links to both options in the descriptions so you can check them out for yourself and compare the experience. Our third time saving tip is to bring bottles of water and an umbrella to help protect you from the sun. It does get ridiculously hot out there in summertime and if you're protected from the sun you won't get as fatigued as easily and you won't need to take as many breaks. Same for keeping hydrated and drinking plenty of water. If you have your own drinks you won't need to stop at any of the shops to buy water and wasting time standing in line. And for our final time saving tip, I just wanted to reiterate a point we made earlier about pre-planning where you want to go in the site. If you start your day by going straight to the area of interest that is furthest away from the entry point, 
Then you can spend your day working back towards where you would eventually leave the site while exploring all of the buildings of most interest to you. Getting caught on the wrong side of the city when it's time to leave will just waste a lot of time. Plus it can be a confusing place to find the exits, so a little bit of preparation and planning goes a long way. It feels like we've been very encouraging up to this point for people to spend just a half day in Pompeii, but that doesn't take into account what else is in the region. So an additional question to consider when planning your day trip to Pompeii is what else you might want to do there. If you want to hike Mount Vesuvius, you're going to need more time. What about the local wine tasting experiences? You're going to need more time for that as well. The last thing you want is to leave Pompeii feeling like you've missed out on an experience you would have really enjoyed. So if you do have the available time, I'd encourage you to look at the activities on offer around the region. We've included a number of links in the description.